hi welcome back to my channel today's video is on how to make invisible boning channels so if this is what interests you ensure to stay to the end so you can follow the process i use in achieving it this is the one i made for a client's dress and this is how neat the front is looking the stitches on the bone is not showing on the front part so this is basically what we are going to be doing in this video the whole stitches went to the back so this is how neat it looks and i think this is better off i also did the same thing for the back area and this is the back looking all neat and you know very much better and this is the outcome of the dress when i was done making it it was easier for me to embellish this dress using the invisible boning technique i will also show you how to achieve the double boning technique so let's get down into this tutorial <music> I went ahead to cut out the material I'll be using for this particular design and I have a video on my channel on how to cut and sew a bass corset. This is the lining for this particular dress and for this lining I went ahead to create a space at the middle where I will pass my plastic bone and this is the plastic bone I'll be using and the reglin bone I'll be using as well for this project so let's get down to the sewing machine I went ahead to top stitch the allowance I gave for the plastic boning and I'm just trying to mark out the lines I'll be using to bone this dress so I'm making it equal just dividing it I think by one and a half inch one and a half inch on both sides that what I used just trying to make a straight line so that it will be easier for me to join the bone or sew the bone on it so that it won't you know go otherwise or go slanted so this is just me making straight line When I was done making the straight line, this is the reglin bone I'll be using. It can decide to curve this way before sewing it or you can go ahead to iron it straight before stitching it on your dress. So I went ahead to iron my straight so that it will be easier for you. Don't worry, at the end of this, you see the difference between ironing and not ironing before sewing. So I'm stretching it like this and I'm going to sew on it using the a small allowance that you are seeing on the reglin bone so i i will sew it straight up this way and also cut it at the end trying to give half inch allowance on the upper part as well as the down parts of this dress <music> so i'll flip it to this side and i'll stitch it to this other end I'll sew along that place straight up to this end and after this I'll cut the thread and I will go ahead now to do the same thing for others this is how the front is looking for this lining piece remember we are stitching on the lining piece not on the main piece so this is how the outside looks so to the inside I will go ahead now to stitch it on this other side like the lines so I will stitch it using the ironed reglin bone the one I straightened up so I'll use the ironed reglin bone to stitch for this other side and I'll use the other one that I didn't iron to stitch on this other right hand side so after stitching it you will see the outcome of it so this is me stitching the reglin bone just the way I did initially.
And when I was done stitching this other side with the iron regling bone, I'm using the unironed one, that's the curvy one, to use it to stitch this other side so that we'll notice the difference between ironing it and not ironing it to sew. So I'm cutting it just to trim that edge so that I can align with the shape of the lining. So I'll stitch it the same way I did the other side, like stitching the lines I marked out already using the regling bone. So I'm trying to trim off the lines I have at the tip of this bone and I'm trimming it off so that it can give me a neat finishing and this is the inside of the bone that I just created and this is the other curvy part and this is the one that is straight up so I will flip it to the front so that you can notice the difference now so this is the front of it and this is just the difference you can see that this side is ruffles and this side is all straight up like this other side ruffled the little while this side is straight with no ruffles on it so to achieve the double bone channel is basically to use your plastic bone to pipe it inside the regling bone that's if you want to achieve a thick bone channel you push it inside to get to the tip of the regling bone and after that, you can go ahead now to cut it at that place the regling bone stopped. So after cutting it out, and this is just how it looks like, and this is the front of it. So this is, it will be thicker, like very thick compared to using only plastic bone or only regling bone to make it and i'll do the same thing again just to repeat what i said earlier so i'll pipe it inside this way so no need of me sewing on top of the plastic bone i'll just pipe it inside the regling bone already sewn and when it gets to the tip of the regling bone just that place i will cut it out at that place the regling bone stopped as well so i will cut it out that place and this is just what you need to do to achieve your double bone channel and this is how it looks like i'll go ahead now to press it using my steam iron and this is just how it looks like after pressing it on my ironing table this is the part that we use the unironed regling bone to sew on and this is the part that we use the already ironed regling bone to sew on and did our double boning on that part see how thick it looks like this is the idea of achieving invisible boning channel and i'll go ahead now to use this lining piece to turn with the main fabric and this is the main piece after I've finished turning it and this is just how neat it looks like it's a keyhole neckline I also have a video on my channel on how to make a keyhole neckline and this is the inside of it the bone channel are all hidden inside so now it's time for us to pass our plastic bone at the center so to pass this plastic bone I will flip it to the other side and I will open it up just this way I am doing now and I'm going to bring in our already ironed plastic bone. I use a mild steam ironing to iron this plastic bone. And I'll pass it inside that place. 
I will just pass it inside the way I am doing now and when it gets to the end like the edge I will check it and make sure that everything I've gotten to the edge and I will now go ahead now to use my tailoring chalk I will mark the tailoring chalk at that place it since the plastic bone stopped and after marking it at that place now I will push it out and now I will cut it giving some inches away from the place I chalked already so after this I'll push it back inside just to give room for allowance while joining the upper part to the down part of this I will repeat the same thing to the other side for the plastic bone and I'll push it inside this way and also go ahead to chalk it down at that place push it out and cut one inch or half inch away from where I chalked already and I'll push it back inside and I think it was a bit longer after pushing it inside so now I'll push it out again and go ahead to cut out just a little thing away from it so that it can be the same length with the other one I already pushed inside so this is it now and I'll top stitch it at that place the thing stops and go ahead now to do the whole finishing for this dress i'll top stitch it there and go ahead now to do the whole finishing for this particular dress i think this method helps to hide those stitches we see in front of a corset dress and it helps to hide it and you know just inside we have the lines on it and this also gives a good snatch effect like the normal way even if you are stitching on top of the front and this is just how neat everything looks if this video was helpful to you ensure to subscribe leave a comment below like and share this helps the video to get to more people see you in my next video bye